All right, let's just get started. So, local ads in B2009. Um, so, show of hands, how many of you guys use LBAs right now in B15? So, only people who sit in the front of the room use LBAs. <laughs> That's how it works. All right, it's like a third of you guys now. Um, I'll cover what they are in a second, but basically, I will be going over local extensions, which are the new version of LBAs. Uh, they work in a, a fairly different way, um, but they're more flexible and uh, they give us more flexibility to roll out new ad types as well. Uh, you'll see how in a moment. So, uh, LBAs are going to be completely deprecated once V2009 is the, the new standard. Local ad extensions are fully supported in V2009. Um, and they, and B2009 also supports reading of LBAs, but it does not support the creation of new LBAs. So what this means is you can use B2009 to read in your LBAs, translate them into local extensions, um, but you would still need to use B13 in order to... Uh, actually, sorry, if you're using B2009, you can, still, you can change the status of uh, LBAs as well. So once you um, transition, then you can set them to uh, disabled. Um, if you want to create new LBAs, you still need to use V13, but obviously we don't recommend that anymore because we want to be fully on V2009. Any questions about that so far? Okay. So, uh, common features. Basically, what are the advantages of using local ads instead of regular text ads? Uh, for one thing, they serve on Google Maps. So when somebody searches for Plumber New York City on Google Maps, uh, LBAs are the ads that show up in the little left panel. Uh, right at the top and at the bottom of the organic search results. LBAs can also show up as a, uh, as a custom icon on Google Maps on the map itself. So say you're a plumber, you could actually create a little icon that's a plunger and stick that on the map instead of the usual red Google Maps marker. Uh, if you're a carpet cleaner, you could do a vacuum. If you're a, a lawyer, you could do a you know, the scales, all that thing. <laughs> um, so that kind of helps you stand out on Google local search results. Um, when they're not displayed as an icon on the map, they basically look like a regular text ad. You can see uh, two examples of local business ads there. Um, local business ads and local ad extensions both serve uh, on Google search, uh, proper Google search results on Google.com as well, uh, where they look just like regular text ads except with that fifth line of text. Um, if you enter a city only, it just shows New York, New York. If you enter an entire street address, it shows up with the entire street address. Um, so that really helps customers recognize that you're close by to them when they search for carbon clean. Okay, so LBAs, as you guys may know, are a completely separate ad type. Um, actually, you know that better as API developers and people who use the average front end because you actually deal with objects, but um, it was an entirely separate type of objects. Uh, it requires a confirmed physical location in the local business center. The local business center, uh, do you guys, uh, who, who here doesn't know what the local business center is? Okay, so the local business center is, if you go to Google Maps and you search for a plumber, the organic results, the natural results that are not paid, uh, are typically taken from our local business center database. Any uh, small business or even large business, uh, anyone with a, a physical presence basically, can go into Google Maps, into our local business center section, and enter their business details, including their hours of operation, upload a picture of the front of their store, um, any other details about their business, and have that show up as a natural search result uh, when somebody searches. So that's not paid. They don't have to pay for that. It's totally free, and we love it when businesses go out and do that. In order to create an LBA, you needed to have a confirmed physical location in the local business center and then link the ad to the local business center. Um, there were some exceptions though. Uh, some partners with trusted content were allowed to create local business ads without uh, going through LBC, but for the most part, the vast majority, anyone who wanted to create an LBA had to also have a confirmed LBC location. Um, furthermore, each ad was only associated with one street address. So say you uh, wanted to use the same ad copy for 12 different stores that you own, you'd have to create 12 identical ads. And then if you had a typo in one, you'd have to delete all 12 and create 12 new ones. And another limitation of LBAs is that we require that the headline of the ad, that first line, be identical to the business name. And that was to keep a certain level of consistency with uh, Google Maps or organic listings. 
Now we have local extensions. Local extensions are not an ad type. They're basically metadata that you associate with a campaign or a text ad that provides basically a location context uh, when that text ad is going to show. So you attach the address at the campaign level or at the text ad level. Um, and when the ad serve, sorry, uh, yeah, when an ad serves, it picks up from the campaign level by default the location that best matches what the person searched for. So, for example, um, I create uh, one location at the campaign level, one, one address at the campaign level, and I create one text ad. Uh, sorry, let's say I create two, two uh, locations at the campaign level, one for Boston, one for New York. Um, and then I have one text ad that's location agnostic. It just, you know, is a standard text ad, see my products, whatever. Uh, if somebody searches for a plumber in New York, that ad would show with the uh, fifth line of text as a New York address. If someone searched for plumber in Boston, it would show with the fifth line of text uh, for Boston address. If somebody searched plumber Oakland, that ad might still show, but it would only show the first four lines. It wouldn't show any sort of address underneath, and it wouldn't show on Google Maps. Um, you can also attach an address to a single ad, just like a local business ad. Um, I'll cover that in a bit. So you can create, um, you can kind of take the broader route, or you can take the more specific route. And the editorial policy is the same as text ads, meaning that you can make the headline whatever you want. So you're no longer subject to that same limitation of having uh, the headline have to match the business name. Okay, so um, as I just hinted, you can create a extension at the campaign level or at the ad level. So I'll cover the differences a little bit. Alright, so at the campaign level, you attach one or more addresses directly to a campaign. Uh, you can import the addresses from LDC. So if you have an LDC account with uh, 300 you know, national chain stores across the country, you can import all 300 of those locations directly and see them in AdWords. Um, or you can manually upload addresses, but we do limit you to nine manually created addresses. So if you need more, you need to have them confirmed and entered through uh, the local business center. And then, as I mentioned, ads pick up the best matching address when they serve, so a Boston, New York example. All right, so those are campaign level extensions, right? That, that's a, a location or multiple locations at the campaign level that can be picked up by any ads. Um, but you can also create, ad, uh, you can also uh, attach these locations specifically to one individual ad. So if you have an ad that, for example, you want to put the text Boston into, or you want to have a promotion that's only available for, pe for people in Boston, you would only want to you know, show that ad for a specific location. So in this case, um, you uh, basically do what we call, you create an ad override. And that takes one of the locations that's at your campaign level, pairs it with an individual ad, and that ad will only show when the search is for that specific location. So this ad will no longer just show as a general text ad. If someone searches for a plumber in Oakland, that ad won't show if it has a specific ad, uh, you know, location override attached to it. Um, so, okay, and the addresses come from a pool of campaign extensions. So before you can create an ad, an individual ad extension, you need to have that campaign extension in your general pool. Okay, um, so let's take a look at an example. Um, so here we have a campaign that contains a single ad group and two ads. At the campaign level, I have created three individual addresses. One in San Francisco, one in New York, and one in Chicago. Uh, ad number one, has no ad overrides attached to it. And therefore, it can show for any of those three cities, or any of those three individual addresses. But then again, if somebody searches for Dallas or Omaha or something, it could show just as its regular four lines of text without the address in the key. Ad number two, I have created what we call an ad override, and I'll cover, I'll go into more detail in the terminology in a moment. Um, so ad number two has one specific address, this address in New York City attached to it. And that means it will only show for people that are searching specifically in or for New York City. Any questions about that? Okay. So, terminology. Okay, so the 
base class for, for, for a lot of this is what we call an add extension. And an add extension is a very generic object that you'll see more of, not just for location extensions, throughout the AdWords API. Um, and it's even a term that's used in the AdWords front end as well. It's not just a technical term. An ad extension refers to any metadata that we associate with an ad, like a text ad in this case, to enhance the way that it appears or enhance the way that it serves. A location extension is a subtype of an ad extension <coughs> where you're attaching location-specific address data to an individual ad. Um, location extension is, is the important uh, you know, type that you'll be using when creating, ad extent, uh, when creating a local ads in B2009. A campaign ad extension is a pairing of one ad extension and one campaign. So you're basically, again, this is a more of a generic type, um, is a pairing of a, in this case, you, for local ads at least, you'd be comparing a location extension and a campaign. It's the relationship between an address and a campaign. It's that linkage. And an ad extension override is the linkage between an individual ad and that location extension. I say here ad extension um, in, in the bottom two bullet points, but remember ad extension is just the super type of the location extension. So in these, ca in these cases when you're creating local ads, you would just be using a location extension as your ad extension. Okay, so um, these are the terms and the names of the classes that you'll be focusing on when creating the local ads. Okay, so um, here's not quite pseudocode walking through uh, creating an extension. So the first step, you have an address and you have to geocode that address. You do that with what we call the geolocation service, which is really the geocode service, but we called it the geolocation service for reasons that I don't understand and disagree with. Um, <laughs> those of you who are involved in geo world know that geolocation means something else, and geocoding is actually what this is, which is just converting an address into a latitude and longitude. Um, so that uh, is basically rolled up into a geopoint object, the latitude and longitude for that given address. All right, so um, next step is you create that location extension object using the geopoint. Basically, you're rolling that uh, latitude and longitude into the uh, location extension object, which represents the, the address as it pertains to an ad or a campaign. Um, create the campaign ad extension object, which again is the relationship between a campaign and an address and the location extension. And then you just mutate it to, or call mutate to upload it. And uh, now you have that campaign ad extension at your campaign level, associating the address with your campaign. So just doing this, uh, for in one individual address, will create uh, in that one address at your campaign that automatically will apply to all of the ads underneath. So that's, these four steps are all you have to do to add an address to all of the ads inside your campaign. Okay, uh, ad level location extensions are even easier because we've already created the campaign ad extension on the previous page, which is what we'll be using uh, to identify the individual address. So first, use the campaign ad extension dot get, so service dot get to uh, retrieve a list of the addresses you already have at your campaign level. Um, then, using uh, an ad extension override object, you create a relationship between that campaign ad extension and an, and, uh, and an individual ad. And I, I know, the number of times I've said extension in this presentation is <laughs> getting my tongue tied, but. Uh, Basically, the ad extension override is the object that pairs an ad with an address here, an address that's at the campaign level. And then you call mutate uh, to upload the ad extension override you just created. Um, and I know that perhaps just because of the sheer number of times the word extension appears here, this all gets really confusing, um, especially all the terminology. Um, and the first time I looked at it, I was, I was like, what is going on? really have to name everything extension, 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 but uh, it makes sense if you have to look at it for uh, you know, 10 minutes. Um, take a look at the sample code we have. Um, take a look at the, uh, you know, it's all packaged with client libraries too. And just, you know, 
give it a shot at creating an atom. It makes sense after you do it once. Final questions? All right. Thank you very much, guys.